Good evening. Good evening. We're going to start off with 900, oops, I'm sorry, 548, 548. And we'll sing the first and third of this song. Let's all sing. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make him fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort. In trouble he's my stay. star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do His blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With His manna He my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of the shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. 939. 939 will be the imitation song. And we'll sing the first and fourth verse. Good evening. Good to be with you tonight. Um, as you may notice, Anthony's not here. And so I'll be teaching the class tonight for the adults. So that means that if you're typically in the teen class, just stay in the auditorium with us. Okay, because we're going to be in here and Pam is teaching uh, Marina's class. Unfortunately, Andy's father broke his leg. And so they very unexpectedly had to rush out of here and head toward, I believe she said, Kentucky and uh, asked Pam to take to teach her class as well. So we've got several missing, but uh, glad to be with you. And. You know, sometimes we, we read certain things in the Bible and maybe multiple things could be inferred from it. We can make multiple personal applications to our life. But if we look in Mark chapter 2, it's an interesting thing that was said here. Uh, starting in verse 23. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So the Pharisees take this opportunity to see them eating on the Sabbath, pluck, plucking the heads of grain on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you never read... When David, of course, this is Jesus talking, what J David did when he was in need and hungry, he and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of, uh, uh, I need to get bigger print, apparently, Abia, that the high priest, I don't, I don't know why that was, that one's, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests, and also gave some to those who were with him. Now this is the part I really want you to focus on. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So Jesus obviously is talking here. And they're saying, hey, they're doing this thing that we deem unlawful because they're doing it on the Sabbath. They're plucking the heads of grain, and that's considered work. And you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. 
And Jesus said, and he brought them back to King David. Hey, do you not remember when King David went and ate the showbread, uh, which was not probably the best idea that he did, but he and his men were hungry. And they probably don't have a problem with that because it's King David that did it. But he said, also, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The reason that we have a Sabbath day as Israelites, as Jews, is to benefit mankind. A day of rest, a day of remembering, a day of worship. And of course, we don't honor the Sabbath day in the same way because we're Christians. And we come together on the first day of the week as Christians did in the first century. And as the Bible uh, defines. So that is like our Sabbath though. But we don't necessarily have the same constraints as Sabbath day. But that's sort of Jesus' point. Don't look at them as constraints. Look at them as an opportunity for you. It is a day of rest. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And of course, what did the Jewish people do, especially maybe the Pharisees and Sadducees and things like that? They may have added extra rules onto the Sabbath. What is considered work? And what is not work? And if you stick your hand in someone's house and uh, they put it in your hand, then it might not be work. But if you grab it, then it might be work. You know, these crazy crazy rules that they may have just sort of added on to what the Sabbath was meant for. And Jesus says, on top of the fact that the Sabbath is made for man and not man for Sabbath, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. So even if I did want to trumpet, hey, I could trumpet if I wanted to, you know, whatever. So he gives them like three different reasons as to why stop worrying about what my men are doing. Sometimes we can uh, add unintentionally things in and of ourself of rules that we may put on worship that God never necessarily intended. I've heard people say it's, it's unscriptural to put Bible class uh, before or after worship, depending on what you're used to. You know, it's not unscriptural. That's just the way we always have done it is what they really mean. But we say those things tongue in cheek, but there are some things that really do upset certain Christians that they really don't have any right to let it. You know, Christianity, as I've said before, is a balancing act. Our job is to strive to stay in God's lane. I don't want to say in the middle. I don't want to say right or left, but in God's lane, following the Bible as best we can. We don't want to strain too hard or too light, and it's a balancing act. We're trying to do it God's way in God's lane because that's the, that's the truth. That's the right way. And figuring that out is the hard part. And then even harder is actually doing it. Uh, but that's our job as Christians to figure that stuff out and then to try to actually do it and apply it to our life. When we mess up, we know we've got Christ, but we're walking in the light, striving to do that. That's the goal anyway. And uh, so anyway, you know, there's so many different things that you might could pull out of Mark chapter two. But I thought that would be an interesting one to think about. Maybe one you haven't thought about before. Have you been straining at things that that God doesn't want you to strain about? Or maybe you haven't been straining enough in your life on godly principles and you want to come back. You want help with that. You want prayers or maybe you want to become a Christian tonight. If we can help you in any way, won't you come while we sing together? Oh, do not let the word depart. And close my eyes against the light.
two announcements. Everybody that's sick, keep them in your prayers. Tommy Horton had cataract surgery this Tommy, morning. Tommy Horton had cataract surgery this morning. He did well. He did well. And Louise had tests today, and she's resting this evening. Yeah. And then Louise, she had tests, and she's resting. And then and Andy's dad, keep him in your prayers and yes. them as they travel. Somebody's sister showed up. Yeah. Yours. Somebody's back there as well. So, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah, we got it. It's really good to see her. So, wish them a safe trip on their way back as well. Sarah and Caleb. Sarah and Caleb, yeah. Um, 608. 600 A is going to be our closing song. We'll just sing the first verse and then we'll be dismissed to our classes. <clears throat> Let's all sing. He took my burden all away up to a brighter day. He gave me a song, a wonderful song, a wonderful song I now can sing. In my heart joy bells ring. He gave me a song, a wonderful song. He gave me a song to sing about. He lifted me. Sin and doubt. Oh, praise his name. He is my king. A wonderful song he is to me. We have a great thing in that uh, Remind app. If you are on it, great. If you're not on it, get with Andy or Chase will help you with it. And uh, it keeps us. It, we always say, if you got an announcement sheet, if you got an announcement, well, that's the announcement sheet, and it works. It works really well. Not everybody can get on. I understand. Gray hair sometimes can't get on it, you know. But uh, it really, really helps. It helps a lot. Um, D and I talked on the way in, and uh, we were discussing those that are in or on the uh, um, the Remind app, those that are having problems, and those with their their our family. And then we discussed the fact that how blessed we are. Here we are, driving driving a car that runs, walking, everything. Amen. We got roof over our heads. We got food and we got clothes. So we're doing great. So let's give thanks to God for us, and then let's ask Him to heal those that that are in need of healing. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for what you give us. And we don't say that lightly because we know that you bless us. And you bless us beyond belief, actually. And we thank you for that. We pray, Father, that those that are on our prayer list or on our hearts and minds, that you will not only heal, heal them, but you'll comfort them. Bring comfort as only you can. And there are many on this list. There's some that are just recently on this list that, that are, are troubled and they need your help. We pray, Father, that you'll guide us to help them when we can. But we pray that it be your will, you'll heal them. And we pray this, Father, in your Son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen.